does not work. And he is forced to play King G8. Nothing to think about here. There it's it a is. Lonely move. He usually reacts. He usually shows it. And I think now it's dawning on him. There it is that this does not hold up. And his choice of giving away his A pawn and playing for this E5 maneuver was not the way to play. I was impatient, looking to fix the position. And you know, he has a tendency to do that in defense, not to sit and wait. He tried to create a draw on the board directly, a fortress. Yeah. And it turns out that it did not hold up. And now he's physically displaying the futility of the situation. Because this one, rook h7, is actually kind of nice. He forces the king to g8. He plays rook to e7, or rook over. The rook has to drop back to stop the threat of checkmate and one. And king takes, and a moment ago, the king was on h8, and there was a rook g8. But now with the king on g8, well, take it. the g-pawn is just, it falls in with these two connected passers. That's all she wrote. Note, by the way, he only has one move. Yeah, he only has thinking. one move, and he's thinking. So this is the exact that speaks position. to the fact that he's he probably feels like he missed this move, although he would have lost anyway. But now that it's very very clear, he's looking at it and he's realizing, and he only has one move. Right. There's no reason to sit here. Why not just make King G8 exactly. and suffer about it later? You're just losing time on the clock for no reason. Right. But it is now that it is hitting him emotionally. And he is very upset that this has occurred because he defended so well for so long and then he just ditched his setup and, and allowed this for Magnus. And suddenly, Magnus Carlsen is going to win and go into a three-way tie for first wow. with a drawing of the lots to decide who moves on, giving That's himself a chance. And who's the and odd man out? And somebody will be the odd man out. Incredible. As if we didn't have enough dramatic excitement. We knew the Sinkfield Cup. Despite the many, many, many draws and the fighting draws, we knew that St. always delivers. At the very end, we always get so much excitement. And this other game going on right now that has some Nobody's so watching. completely irrelevant. But I, do think that Magnus, I think Magnus knows that game with FPL. I think he had that in his memory bank as he was watching this game. Um, and they're the to look at the second game. They're Somehow, MBL has actually swindled an extra pawn, and he, he's in a, a, an endgame with two pawns to the good, but quite frankly, uh, All eyes are in Magnus Absolutely. Yeah, well, so let's just stay with that game and not... Uh, and there we have Nakamura shaking. A very hand. despondent Hikaru, but, you know, that defense, he tried, that, that was like the airbag defense, A5. G5, it just failed to deploy. Especially, it wasn't necessary, and uh, you know, necessary he's playing against the man no. who says, I don't believe in fortresses. Talk about waving the flag. Yeah, <laughs> boy, but I mean, this is what it takes to win at the very highest level, and we've seen Magnus just grinding out these wins throughout his career. We saw it earlier in the tournament uh, against Circuit. Yep. And uh, Fabi is, pardon me, Caro is not going to be on Fabi's a Christmas A list anymore. That's <laughs> well, Magnus had defeated defeated him in over two years. After we well, said he was a regular customer of right. Magnus, and then he finally defeated him with Black. Drew six games in a row. Take this one. This one was just looking very much like a draw. Then made some really inexplicable decisions from a practical standpoint. It was better to sit and wait mm -hmm. than it was to just toss a pawn and then toss your structure and dare the guy to figure out if there's a win. And you know, if there's Magnus a win, Magnus <laughs> is going to sit there and say, well, I got an extra pawn and your, your F pawn's weak. Let's see what it's like. So a very, in, in retrospect, but even when it was happening, it looked like a dubious decision on Nakamura's part. And it is simply crashed in his face right now as this move will send him to his three, send him to three losses in this tournament as well. Icaro. And we will bring you the draw near the lots live um, as the other players are brought in. But yeah. yes, if, if the adjudication was based on judging and you had to pick which two players deserved it most to be on the playoff, how could you choose between these three? Because it's so oh, different. Awesome. Bobby um, maintained the lead throughout the tournament. And, and there it is. Magnus Carlson has joined the three-way tie for first. 
Magnus, the ultimate grinder, versus Fabiano, who um, just played so well defensively against Carly. Carlson, showed that he was the front runner throughout the tournament, and then Levon, who played the most beautiful game of the tournament. I mean, yeah. how could you pick between these three players, Jazz? If you had to pick, who would be who would be out? I don't know. Who would be out? Uh, you I, to pick. You got to do it. Yeah, get, 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 choice. Yeah, get, just give me a second to think <laughs> about it. But uh, I learned something uh, on the break. Uh, we got mathematicians in the house, and uh, ah. Alejandro.